Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Khmer's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Okay, so multiple episodes in a single day is not something I expected to do again for quite some time, but here we are again with... Another, let's just call it, mini spoiler season with the Secret Lair Street Fighter cards being potentially spoiled, and I do want to stress potentially. Because if you haven't seen my earliest episode from this morning on Chun-Li Countless Kicks, make sure you check that episode out, where I also go over the potential spoiler picture that shows off all the potentially spoiled cards. Also, at some point, make sure you check out my episode on Blanca Ferocious Friend. Yeah, this is a very spicy commander that is very flavorful, and is quite shocking, let's just say that. And also make sure you check out my episode on Zangief the Red Cyclone, an absolutely unbearable commander. Get it? Because there's the bear there? All right, you're probably tired of puns. But too bad, because on this episode, I've got yet another pun for you, because I'm asking you the question, can you win with Ken Burning Brawler? And Ken's responding, sure you can. Get it? Okay, also terrible. Anyways, blame Eddie for all those puns. It is definitely Eddie's fault and not mine. Uh, okay, it's my fault, but still blame Eddie if I make any mistakes in this episode. And again, a big thank you to Eddie for all your help during spoiler seasons and mini spoiler seasons like this one. And now with all those puns hopefully done, let's jump into it. So again, I do want to reiterate, this is a potential spoiler, it has not been confirmed by Wizards. That being said, I am basically 99.99999% sure that it is an actual card. And yeah, as you can see with this card though, this is actually a custom card version of it because the actual picture is very, very small. So again, a big thank you to MTG.Design for existing because you helped me make custom cards such as this one. Regardless, Ken Burning Brawler is a 4-2 human warrior with prowess that costs one red red. And again, prowess means that whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus plus one until end of turn. Which is very relevant with this card, and we'll get to why, well, pretty much now. Anyways, you can pay Boros and Ken gets first strike until end of turn, so yes, this is a Boros commander. And Ken, of course, has sure you can get it from the pun earlier. Anyways, when Ken deals combat damage, you may cast a sorcery spell from your hand with a mana value less than or equal to that damage without paying its mana cost. So this is worded in a very specific and very intentional way, so let's break it down. Whenever Ken deals combat damage, it does not specify that that combat damage has to be on a player, which... Many of those, you know, combat damage uh, triggers are, you know, whenever it deals combat damage to a player. This one is just any kind of combat damage. So whether it's damage to a creature or to a player, you are getting that trigger. And again, at that time, you can cast a sorcery spell, specifically sorcery, not instant or sorcery, just a sorcery spell from your hand with mana value less than equal to the damage that was dealt without paying its mana cost. So you're actually cheating on a sorcery spell, and on top of that, you are cheating on the timing for that spell, obviously, because, well, when you're dishing out that combat damage, you wouldn't normally be able to cast a sorcery, but in this case, it's like, hey, no, uh, take that sorcery and cast it right now. Yeah, for free. And again, that prowess comes into play because, again, you're like, hey, okay, so normally I could cast things, you know, without, you know, casting anything else or getting Ken's power any higher. That costs three or less, but obviously if you cast some non-creature spells to pump Ken up, then you can cast bigger and bigger things for free when you hit with this. So obviously there's a good amount of things to consider with this Boros Commander, and it's a really unique take on a Boros Commander, and I, I really like the design. There's definitely a lot of exciting things that you can do with it, and a lot of directions that you can take a commander like this. That being said, something that I've said on each of these episodes and I want to reiterate again here is, hey, if you are excited about this commander, do not feel forced to actually buy the secret lair. Unless, you know, you want to buy the secret lair, then go for it. 
Because again, Wizards has made the adjustment finally that they are going to be making magic versions of these cards. So yeah, in six months or so, I believe, and correct me below off the comments if I'm wrong on that timing, they are going to be coming out with the magic versions of these cards in set boosters. So if you want to wait for one of those, great, go for it. Or I bet there are going to be players out there that might not want to wait on the secret layer to be, you know, printed and shipped to them or wait for, you know, the actual magic cards to come out. And they might just ask their playgroup if it's okay if they build around this commander right now by, you know, making a proxy version of it. And of course, there are probably going to be plenty of playgroups out there that are okay with that. I mean, commander is a social format, so just talk. Regardless, whatever version of this card you are getting, if you're excited about this commander and you want to build around it, what kinds of cards might you want to consider? Well, the first cards that came to my mind were cards like Wheel of Fate, Glimpse of Tomorrow, and Resurgent Belief, which all have one very specific thing in common. They don't have a mana cost. And because they don't have a mana cost, you know, typically you actually just couldn't cast these from your hand. You'd have to suspend them and cast them from exile, you know, after the time counters were removed. But uh, with Ken, you can. Okay, that wasn't meant to be a pun or anything like that. I just happened to say that in that order. Anyways. Again, Ken literally would just have to deal, what, one combat damage to be able to cast any of these because, you know, it's basically less than one. You know, Ken already deals four, so obviously that meets the requirement of, you know, being able to cast a spell that costs three or less, a sorcery, I should say, that costs three or less, and these each cost zero, so yeah, you can cast them. Ken essentially helps you cheat around that suspend requirement and lets you cast any of these very powerful spells for free. Wheel of Fate is basically like Wheel of Fortune. It makes every player discard their hand, then draw seven cards. So yeah, now you get a wheel for free with Ken if you want that. And if you really want to be chaotic, you can cast Glimpse of Tomorrow for free. It says shuffle all permanents you own in your library, then reveal that many cards on the top of your library. Put all non-aura permanent cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, then do the same for aura cards, put the rest of them on your library in a random order. Now, that might be a bit of a weird deck to build around, but go for it if you really want to. Or if for some reason you want to go into an enchantment heavy build, go with Resurgent Belief. It says return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So sure, in Boros there are plenty of ways to, you know, loot and get cards into your graveyard, and then, you know, just basically cheat them into play with this. Now obviously outside of Wheel of Fate, these are very specific directions to go with either Glimpse of Tomorrow or Resurgent Belief, so most people probably won't go in those directions, though you can build an entire deck around them if you really want to. But there is another card that I did leave out of these three that, well, let's move on to it. Because a different but very powerful direction that you could take Ken, and actually a pretty mean one, is with Restore Balance, which might lose you some friends. It's a sorcery that does not have a mana cost, so again, its mana value is zero, and normally you couldn't cast it, and Suspend is Suspend 6, which takes forever, but again with Ken, you're like, uh, let's just skip around that and cast it right away. It says each player chooses a number of lands they control equal to the number of lands controlled by the player controls the fewest, then sacrifice the rest. Players sacrifice creatures and discard cards the same way. So if you really want to build a Restore Balance Ken deck, yeah, I mean, build it so that you can sacrifice a bunch of lands and basically have no lands in play, and so you only have Ken in play as your creature, and maybe so do you have a hand, so you just take out everyone's everything. And again, you might take out some friendships along the way. But in all seriousness though, there are definitely certain playgroups out there that are completely fine with this kind of a strategy, and yeah, if that's one of your playgroups, go for it. But when it comes to non-zero mana cards to consider with Ken, other ones to consider might be ones that give Ken Double Strike to double up on that trigger with things like Assault Strobe, Lizard Blades, and Blood Mist. Assault Strobe is a sorcery for a red, and it says target creature gains Double Strike until end of turn. So this simple one mana spell again triggers Prowess on Ken, you know, giving it plus one plus one, which is great. Ken's gonna hit for five now, so you can cast anything with four or less, and then Ken's gonna hit again, so you can do the same thing. And actually, okay, I should specify, when I do say anything, I do mean any sorcery that's four or less in that situation. And of course, the brand new Lizard Blades can help you out as well, an artifact creature equipment lizard, because that's a thing, is a 1-1 one -one with double strike and gives a quick creature double strike. Or yeah, even the very fantastic enchantment Blood Mist, which gives one of your creatures at the beginning of combat double strike until end of turn, that's all you need. You just need to keep giving Ken double strike to build a double up on that trigger. And again, I mean, Double Strike is somewhat of a way to protect Ken since it does get to hit first, you know, with that first strike damage first. I mean, obviously, you could just give Ken first strike by paying a Boros, but still, this kind of is a more improved version of that. And speaking of improved, how about another, let's call it a Double Strike spell with Savage Beating that does, well, just a little bit more. 
Savage Beating is an instant that costs three red red, and it can only be played during your turn and only during combat. It says, choose one. Creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn, or untap all creatures you control and enter this phase, the additional combat phase, or you can get both by entwining it for one and a red. Yeah, a big thank you to Eddie for pointing out not only extra turn spells, but also, you know, double strike cards being very effective with Ken, and this is an incredibly effective one. I mean, essentially by casting this and entwining it, and you know, again, assuming Ken is dealing damage and surviving each time, you are getting, what, four triggers? And again, you get that prowess, uh, I mean, first, I guess I should say by actually casting Savage Beating, so you can cast, what, four sorceries that cost four or less. So yeah, that is a uh, very spicy play, and it can definitely give you a ton of value and help you out in a lot of circumstances. And obviously, you know, your more typical extra combat spells can really help you out as well, like a Relentless Assault, you know, just your standard extra combat spell for four mana, say Sorcery, it's great. Or how about, you know, an additional extra combat spell like World at War, which basically gives you an extra combat, and then it rebounds, and then next turn you get an extra combat too. Yeah, there are plenty of fantastic extra combat spells and effects in these colors, so definitely make sure you are considering them for a deck around Ken. Now, another thing to consider is that, again, well, you really want to make sure that Ken survives combat, so you can just keep doing, you know, more Ken things, so something like Dolmen Gate can really help you out. It's an artifact that costs two, and it says prevent all combat damage to be dealt to attacking creatures you control. Again, all you care about to get Ken's trigger is to have Ken deal combat damage. Obviously, first strike can help Ken survive, or, you know, double strike as well, but there are definitely going to be times where Ken's being blocked by, you know, at least one or two creatures or, or whatnot that it can't survive, and having something like this in play just gives you an extra sense of security in that, hey, I'm free to swing out with Ken and depend on that trigger, and as long as this stays in play, Ken's going to stick around too. And actually, unfortunately, I think this is around a $10 card or so these days, so Wizards, please reprint it. It's a very, very cool card. But of course, there are plenty of other cards that can help Ken out. I mean, Arrestor's Zeal, Trailblazer's Boots, and Darkseal Plate are just a few of them. Arrestor's Zeal is a very simple but very effective spell with Ken. It's an instant for a white that says target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn, and it's got an addendum. If you cast this during your main phase, that creature gains flying until end of turn. So yeah, I mean, you can either utilize this as a combat trick if you really want to, or just give Ken flying and get through probably on at least one opponent. And again, Ken doesn't even need to actually get through to get that trigger. It's not, you know, combat damage on an opponent, it's just combat damage. So maybe an opponent has, you know, some flyers still, but not enough to actually take Ken out, especially if you can give it first strike. And, you know, again, with the rest of the seal, that's basically plus three plus three because of that prowess. So, yeah, Ken can definitely survive combat in a lot of ways with just this. But again, if you do want to get Ken through, you definitely can do that as well with something like Trailblazer's Boots, which can help out in a lot of scenarios. It's an equipment that says equipped creature has non-basic land walk. So, yeah, there's definitely bound to be at least one player at the table that has a non-basic land. So get through on that player if you really need to protect Ken. But again, as I keep stating, you don't have to get combat damage on a player for this to work. So even just give Ken Indestructible with something like Darksteel Plate, that works too. It's an equipment that not only has Indestructible, but of course gives equipped creature Indestructible, so this thing is hard to deal with, and it makes your commander hard to deal with too. And of course, there are a ton of other fantastic pieces of equipment that I could bring up to help either get Ken through or to help protect him. Yeah, there's a lot of good options in this kind of a deck. So because of that, maybe you want to include something like Open the Armory to take advantage of those equipment, or maybe even some auras. It says search your library for an aura equipment card reveal, put in your hand, then shuffle your library, and it only costs one and a white. So yeah, two mana, go get whatever equipment or aura you want. This can be fantastic with this kind of a build. Other types of equipment that you might want to consider, depending on what way that you're taking this deck, might be something like Blackblade Reforged. It's an equipment that's going to give equipped creature plus plus one for each land you control. And yeah, I mean, again, Ken's trigger, you know, is based off of what its power is. So getting its power up can essentially let you cast anything. Now, obviously, again, Ken has prowess, so you can cast more and more non-creature spells to get that power up. But uh, this can just essentially solidify, yeah, essentially, I can cast whatever I want. So if you want to go into more of a cheating high mana sorceries direction, you can definitely do that with this kind of a commander and this kind of a build. Or, you know, and you can definitely blame Eddie for these because Eddie brought them up, you could go into a mass land destruction build. So whether it's Armageddon or Ravages of War or Catastrophe, just utilize Ken to destroy all lands. And actually, you really don't even have to utilize Ken to do so. I mean, your opponents are going to be out of resources at that point, you know, unless they've got a bunch of mana rocks, which you can also, you know, destroy in a lot of different ways. But yeah, by taking away everyone's resources to pay for spells, you're going to probably end up on top because, 
Well, you have got Ken, and Ken can help you cheat on other sorceries. Even though you don't have any mana, you can still cheat on them and cast them. So if you've got a good amount of, you know, again, these destroy all lands type of cards like Armageddon, even if your opponents try to rebuild at some point, you're probably just going to blow up all their lands again. And then, yeah, uh, you are in the driver's seat. And again, you might have lost your friends unless your playgroup is completely okay with mass land destruction spells. But that is definitely something you should probably ask them before building a deck around Ken in this way. Because Armageddon is definitely one of the saltiest cards out there for a reason. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Ken Burning Brawler. Yeah, I think that this is a very interesting design and one that I did not expect to see from a Boros Commander. It's a low to the ground commander that rewards you for getting in combat damage, no matter if that's, you know, combat damage to creatures or to players. And again, the more combat damage that you get in, whether, you know, that's with double strike or extra combat spells, the more you get rewarded. Of course, you can take into a direction when you're taking advantage of spells that you shouldn't be able to cast, like those zero mana spells, or, you know, you can take it into a, let's just call it less enjoyable direction for certain playgroups by blowing up everyone's lands. And of course, outside of those directions, there are plenty of other ways that you can take this commander, and yeah, there definitely is some interesting things that Ken can do. That being said, again, I've said this again and again and again, and I want to reiterate, just because you are excited about this commander does not mean that you should feel forced, you should never feel forced to buy something like a secret lair. There are magic versions of these cards coming out as well, so if you want to wait for those, then wait for those. Those will be in set boosters at some point. Again, I believe that the timeline is about six months or so. And again, I'm sure there are going to be players out there that don't want to wait that long and want to build around this commander right away, and probably are going to go ask their playgroups if it's okay if they already do so and just use a proxy version of it. That being said, one other thing, again, I want to reiterate, this is a potential spoiler. It has not been officially confirmed by Wizards. So please take everything I've said today with a grain of salt, though again, I do believe that there's a 99.99999% chance that this thing is legitimate. And it has been quite the day with many cups of coffee, and I, well, probably need a little break right now, so I might be picking back up on these commanders, you know, the ones I haven't covered yet, you know, that are still potential spoilers, tomorrow at some point. Stay tuned for that. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one. <laughs>